All right, everybody, this is Ross. I thought in today's video, we would do like a mini harvest type video for you guys. Um, I know there's some of you guys out there who like that kind of thing. I, I enjoy watching harvest videos. Um, we're in the mushroom patch right now. This is the, the wine caps and these things, man, they don't stop, I'm telling you. So far, they're pretty darn relentless. And um, I actually had a number of them that went to waste and I figured I'd just throw them back in the garden beds because how am I gonna eat all these? <laughs> I also was storing the first batch of them improperly. But you know what, it is what it is. Now that we know that they're safe, they are wine caps for sure. Um, I'm gonna give them away. I've been giving a number of them away now to my grandmother. Um, She's actually got some cancer, so we've been trying to get her as much food from the garden over the last few years uh, as possible. And uh, I can't think of a better thing to give her than mushrooms, right? Can you guys? I can't. For cancer? It's probably the best thing to come out of your garden, right? For this kind of thing. Um, so we've got a number of mushrooms here. I'm gonna give, I think, some to my friends too. I got a couple of friends I'm gonna see this weekend, which is nice because, you know, who even knows if you have friends anymore at this point of what's going on in the world? Because um, we haven't been able to see each other in a long time. But um, yeah, I'm gonna give some of them away. Some people are really gonna love these damn things. As I said, I've confirmed now that they're safe and <laughs> I feel comfortable giving them away and uh, obviously letting people eat them. The slugs are the only thing it seems like that eats these mushrooms. I thought maybe some wildlife would be eating these, but it turns, like, it turn, turns out that nothing here really is going for it just yet. Um, now there's just so darn, darn many of these damn things that I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, so I'm just gonna have to keep giving these out and whoever's brave enough to eat them will eat them. And uh, whoever's not, well, I don't know, maybe they're gonna go to waste. I haven't figured that out, but this one here is ginormous. They call it the garden giant for a reason. This thing's bigger than my hand. I realized that these mushrooms are so big, the wine caps, that you can like feed an entire family. You could have an entire meal with just one or two of the mushrooms. I mean, you know, if you let them get really big, like this guy, you put this in a stir fry, you don't even need to use the stem. You just put this giant thing in the stir fry and this is all you need. Um, look at that. It's just absurd, isn't it? So we've got ourselves a pretty ridiculous mushroom harvest and I could come out here, it's what seems like every other day and harvest these darn things. And they're spreading, the mycelium is spreading. I put it in other places, it's just going crazy. So yeah, uh, nuts, absolutely nuts. Now. I do see a black leaf down there on the pear tree. And uh, that is not good. That usually means fire blight. Totally black. Looks like a pear leaf to me. Maybe there's some fire blight down in here. I'm not seeing any. I'm gonna have to keep a close eye on this, this Asian pear here because that's what happened last year is that one of the trees got the uh, got fire blight and I had to pull it out. Now, believe it or not, we don't really have a whole lot to harvest from just yet. I'm still waiting for these darn strawberries to come in. This is my uh, June bearing strawberry patch right here of early glow. You can see like, look at all these flowers on the raspberries, the first crop really is gonna be nuts. I've never seen a first crop like this before. And normally I don't let the first crop go, but 
all three of these plants I have that are mature are loaded with the, uh, the first crop. Um, at least the particular variety that I, I grow. I normally grow them for the, the, uh, the fall crop here, guys. The, the spring crop usually gets eaten by the birds unless I protect them. So I don't really bother. Um, but maybe I will this year because there's so much of it. Now we do have some radishes and things that we can harvest underneath these beds. I have some turnips, uh, but that's about it underneath here, believe it or not. Out of all this garden space, there's not a whole lot, but we do have in this cold frame, we have a number of different things. Uh, you know what? Put you guys in a different, oh no, you guys are good. So we have uh, in this cold frame that we took the top off of, we have uh, sugar snap peas, and I'm not really gonna harvest any of these because I just ate a bunch of them as a snack. That's normally what I do throughout the day. And in the morning, I'll come in here and I'll snap some of these off and uh, eat them as a snack. One of the best garden snacks, by the way. On a hot day, ain't nothing better. Now the garlic here I'm looking at, now I thought the garlic was gonna be off to a better start than it has been. Um, it looks really vigorous, it looks really healthy this year, it looks really thick. I mentioned that in a couple videos that we've done recently. And I thought because it's, it's looking so good and it's so far away from flowering time, which is these scapes here, guys, um, that I thought my garlic was gonna be huge this year. But shortly after I made that video, we started getting scapes. And <laughs> the scapes are one of the best treats that come out of your garden all year. They're a delicacy, I mean it. They're one of the best things you guys can eat. They're probably better than the garlic themselves. <laughs> Um, and maybe you could debate that, but um, this is why I grow the hard neck types. And we've already harvested a number of these. Um, about half of them have already harvested. And you want to take these off, not only because you can eat them, but and they're really good, but also that it frees up a lot of the energy and gets then directed towards the, the bulb. Um, so I don't want to keep these on here too long. If they look mature, I'm taking off the, the flower heads. So that's what we've got here. There's a number of scapes. And I'm telling you guys, these are like the best thing ever. And um, this is what they look like. And you basically just chop these up in the kitchen. You'll come in here and chop these up in like asparagus lengths. Um, if you're cutting up asparagus, maybe in like thirds or fourths, and then you saute them in olive oil and they come out so, so good. The ends here are kind of like chives. And then as you get in, they have like a really nice texture to them. They're really meaty. It's like a meaty, it's like eating a meaty piece of garlic that is not as potent as garlic. Uh, it's just, it's wonderful. So. Yeah, uh, we also have back here honey berries that are ripening up now. And I can show you, I think a couple of them here. So finally we're seeing some fruit that's getting close to ripe, here we go. So there they are in the back. They're getting blue now. But they need to be blue, like fully blue for two weeks before I harvest them. And I'm gonna have to net them because the birds like them. Uh, what isn't surprisingly that far behind is the gooseberry. You can see all these gooseberries, they're loaded this year. My gooseberries have been doing wonderful. Look how big the comfrey is, by the way. Comfrey is huge. The bees are all over this damn thing. Everywhere, all over the yard. It's amazing. Look how big the comfrey is <laughs> in between the apple trees there. Um, all right, let's move on. I have some Swiss chard. I'm going to harvest later, but I'm not going to worry about that. Let's check out the 
these strawberries here. These are almost ready. This are the uh, Rucker Scarlet, I believe. This is that variety. Uh, the Mar de Bois in the early glow this year seem to be a bit further behind than they normally are. And then this is the purple, the purple one from uh, Burpee. What's the name of this? Purple, oh, I don't remember. Purple Passion Strawberry? I don't know, that seems like such a common name. Could that be right? And then we're gonna come out here, guys, for some asparagus. Uh, I have actually harvested quite a bit of asparagus so far, and I don't know how much more I can really take from these plants, so I might just wait, but I know a lot of people recommend that you can harvest all the way up until the, uh, the summer solstice. And I'm just coming here at the base and twisting and pulling, and that's pulling out the whole thing. You guys know what I mean. There's this white part portion here. You wanna pull this out. And then you come in here where it's breakable, as you guys would in the kitchen, and you break this off. And then this is, just gets tossed, and I'll compost that. Or if some critter wants to eat it, I haven't seen anything eating these just yet. But look how freaking long this asparagus is. It's the size of my, my torso, guys. Look at that. That's crazy. Um, so we've been loving that stuff as a family. My family actually likes asparagus, which is good. This plant here, I realized, actually isn't all that vigorous and strong. So I'm gonna leave this, I think. I'm gonna leave this, I'm not gonna harvest this one. Now I'm gonna come over here on this plant. You can see how they're like bushing out now. Because I like to put them underneath the wire that we've set up. We have a wire system that's in the fence with the eye hooks. And then that makes these plants not bend and fall over all over the place and makes them neater and tidier and look nicer. This one here is just now getting to that height where it's gonna start branching out like this one has. And I thought maybe I should wait, but it actually looks a lot more vigorous than I had thought. So maybe I will harvest um, more from this particular plant. So I'm gonna pull some of these out of here. And this is really, okay, I sort of said this in the asparagus video, it's all up to your judgment. You know, at what size do you wanna harvest them at, uh, how many do you want to harvest? And how far into the season do you want to harvest? It really is all up to you. I think that summer solstice amount, like harvest them all the way up until the summer solstice. I think that's all I'm gonna do. I don't need to get carried away, right? There's a lot of food here. There's a lot of asparagus. For a family of four, this is plenty. Um, Yeah, it's pretty crazy, huh? So, I don't know how old these plants are, but they should be, I think probably two years in the ground now, a total of three years old. I had them in pots for a couple years before I put them in. Um, but, you know, this is pretty good. I, this is like free food. Um, I mean, what was the cost to even get these things next to nothing? And uh, the, the strawberries over there, the Mar de Bois are coming in. And I'll quickly show you the blueberry harvest that I'm gonna have later this season. Which is just, it's, it's stupid. It really is. The amount of blueberries that you can get off of these plants is uh, quite ridiculous. Look at that. Look at these clusters of blueberries here and they're everywhere. They're a little bit hidden now, but Ain't that ridiculous? And it's all over these plants. It's not just that one that I have about, I don't know, five or six of them here. About six blueberry plants. They're really filling in now. Um, so yeah, just grow some food. I mean, come on. <laughs> what are you guys thinking at this point? I don't get it. <laughs> Anybody who's not growing food, it just, 
blows my mind at this point. My camera tripod doesn't want to get through that doorway, so there's that. But yeah, let me get the bowl of food that we harvested today and uh, get you guys on your merry way. We have a number of actually, I just saw a very, I just saw a baby rabbit over there. That's, that was pretty cool. Um, we have a number of different things, you know, that you can forage around the yard that you can kind of just get, like chives, uh, green onions will come up from these Walla Walla onions here. So I've been, what I do is I actually just come in here and uh, harvest a number of these shoots like this. This will be a nice green onion. It's got even a bulb on the end. And you can kind of just make yourself a meal. There's mint I have. Uh, the Swiss chards back there. Um, you can kind of just find random things around the yard at certain points of time. If you really were in a pinch and needed some food, it's crazy. So thank you guys here for watching this little harvest video. I mean, here's what we got. It's pretty darn cool. So more of these to come. If you guys enjoyed the harvest videos, let me know. I'll do more of them. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care.